Hi, I'm Dr. Al Plechner. Hi, Dr. Plechner. Can we talk a little bit about vaccination? What do you think about vaccination for our pets? Well, there's there's been a lot of controversy about vaccines and uh, will they protect? How often they should be given? Uh, can they be damaging? Can reactions occur from them? It's interesting. It's been a few years ago, but the American Animal Hospital Association put out a, a real interesting article by Dr. Schultz uh, discussing a lot of this. And what his findings were is that so often these vaccines will last, uh, instead of doing them yearly, every two years, three years, sometimes they'll last seven, eight, even 10 years, which is interesting. Whether, uh, and that's mainly for dogs. Cats, it seems like it's the same also. And as time goes on, the manufacturers seem to be telling us as veterinarians, you only need to do it every two years, every three years, what have you. Uh, the rabies vaccine is different because that is determined by your local authorities. Uh, and so uh, that's something we have no control over. What we do have control over, though, is the amount of vaccine that is being used. Uh, unfortunately, as I see, but again, this is my own opinion, I would never give the same amount of vaccine to a five-pound dog that I would give to a 200-pound dog. And then when you start doubling up on vaccines, well, we're going to do something for kennel cough bordetella. We're going to do the distemper parvo hepatitis one. We're going to do the rabies. Uh, you can understand how a full vaccine, three of them, an accumulative amount, uh, can really, really uh, cause a problem with a small dog. So I monitor the amount I give, too. And I also suggest doing titers. Once the puppy or kitten has been vaccinated correctly, uh, the following year, if you want to check or at the end of the vaccine procedure, uh, you can actually do a titer to see if those vaccines have worked because many times they have not worked. And in that instance, you're dealing with Plechner syndrome again. You're looking at a hormone antibody imbalance in a B cell that was deregulated and was not able to uh, make proper immunity. And how this works is, uh, again, a number of years ago, I was contacted uh, by a family that had an 18-month-old Doberman that died from Parvo. He'd had multiple shots. And they got a new dog. It was interesting. Uh, a four-month-old uh, black and white uh, uh, Great Dane that was just super, and they wanted a guarantee from me that she would not uh, break with Parvo if we vaccinated her, okay? So went ahead, did the proper number of vaccines, and then at 12 weeks of age, did a titer. Guess what? No antibodies. She didn't have the ability to produce antibodies. So at that time, did the endocrine immune blood panel, Plechner syndrome, uh, put her back on proper hormones to regulate her immune system so her B cell now could function, revaccinated her, and two weeks after the last vaccine, she had a tremendous titer level. And so these are some things you need to think about with these vaccines. Uh, there is a variation in them. Uh, animals can react to them. There's no doubt about it. And if you do get a reaction, you know, make sure that the amount that was given is not an overdose. And if, in fact, that vaccine is necessary to be given and you know you're going to get a reaction, then have your vet do an anti-reactionary injection ahead of time and then get the vaccine and then basically probably sit in the waiting room for 10 to 20 minutes to make sure a reaction is not going to occur. But in my estimation, I think we're seeing over-vaccinations. I think often the pets don't need as often the amount or basically the size of the amount. And this is based upon uh, using small amounts in smaller patients and checking their, their blood titers, which are perfectly fine. So it really doesn't take that much in the way of viral particles to stimulate the immune system that's working correctly. Uh, and you certainly don't have, I don't think you have to put in that much in the way of viral uh, particles in a 200-pound dog that you have to put into a, a small dog. And so uh, please be aware of what we're talking about. And if you can't afford a titer, most people won't do the titer only because it probably costs three, four times more than uh, 
a vaccine does. And if the vaccine hasn't caused any problems and your dog is safe and you're, you're assured your dog is making proper immunity, then that's fine. If not, like myself, I worry. Now, these are just a few of my thoughts on vaccines. And I know they'll differ from others, but this has worked for me for 48 years and I'll continue doing it. And do you find that there's a reaction when all of the vaccines are given at the same time? Do you spread out the different types of vaccines over a course of a period, or is it safe to just give them all? I think it's. I think the smart thing to do, often it's a convenience thing for the pet owner. You know, they don't want to come in and keep coming in and coming in. But I think for the sake and the health of the patient, uh, a larger dog could probably handle multiple vaccines at one time. A small dog... I I don't risk it. I don't recommend it. No more than two at one time. Three is really questionable. Uh, I obviously, and, and if, if something is, if they insist, the owners insist upon it, then I reduce the amount of the vaccine. And it still works fine. But it also reduces the, the risk of having a, a bad reaction. And the reaction can be anywhere from a swollen muzzle to having uh, hives, to a total flat-out anaphylactic reaction where the blood pressure drops, the heart rate drops, and the dog passes out. And it is an emergency situation. So be real careful with how your animal reacts. And if there is a slight chance of a reaction, you then make absolutely sure the amount of vaccine needs to be corrected to a smaller amount and also an anti-reactionary shot given ahead of time and be very, very careful because you don't know when you're going to get a local reaction that's going to move into a systemic reaction.